watch the video of uh, asynchronous counter now we are going to design a 4 bit asynchronous counter as we already discussed uh, counters of two types synchronous and asynchronous here in asynchronous it doesn't have any separate clock pulse the output of the first flip flop has been driven as the clock of the next flip flop ok and uh, it has not been given the clock pulse in a simultaneous manner ok now we can see here it is a 4 bit asynchronous counter so it is able to count from 0, 1, 2, up to 15, it can able to count. Okay. So as we know that how many flip flops that we need for to design a 4 bit asynchronous counter is 4 number of flip flops that we require. Okay. Now we are going to implement this with the help of a JK flip flop. Now let us see the working of this 4 bit asynchronous model. Okay. So it should be Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0 as it is a 4 bit we have to make Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0 so the state diagram that starts from 0, 1, 2 up to 15 ok truth table we can see for every pulse that the Q, Q0 it gets toggle for example first it is 0 then 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 so for every clock pulse we are getting a toggling of the input ok so 0 has been transmitted to 1 1 to 0, 0 to 1, like this it will be working. Okay. So what about the remaining bits? So here for Q3, Q2, Q1, how we are obtaining the values? Okay. Whenever the transition is from 0 to 1 means here in Q1 the same value will come. Okay. Or otherwise, whenever the transition is from 1 to 0, it will complement. That is the concept. So in Q0, whenever the transition is from 0 to 1 means in the next bit there will be no change whenever the transition is from 1 to 0 means there will be some complement ok now consider this so it starts with this 0 0 0 0 ok so first whenever we apply the clock pulse it becomes to 1 ok here the transition is from 0 to 1 so whatever the term here in Q1 appears directly here so here what is the transition 0 to 0 1 hence this term also come directly here here also same now Q2 0 to 0 transmission only. Then whatever the value in the Q3 comes here. Okay. Now come. So that in the next stage here 1 to 0 transmission. Whenever there is a 1 to 0 transmission means this Q1 value gets complement. Okay. So 0 to 1. Okay. Now what is the transition here? 0 to 1. If here it is 0 to 1 means now this 0 comes directly here. Again okay. here also 0 to 0. So no transition. Here same value. Now 0 to 1. Okay. So the same value 1 comes here. Here 1 to 1. So same value. Here also same value. Now look at this example. Here 1 to 0 transmission happened. So whatever the value here in the Q1 gets complemented. So this 1 becomes 0. Okay. Now here also the transition is from 1 to 0. So this 0 gets complement here. So it will become 1. Now what happens in this stage? 0 to 1 transition only. So there will be no change here. Likewise this table will work till this 15 values. Okay. So this is the design of a 4 bit asynchronous counter. Here there are 4 flip flops. Okay. So J0, K0, J1, K1, J2, K2 and J3, K3 are the input flip flops. Okay. So these are the input for the flip flops and Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 as we already mentioned these are all the outputs. So all the connections are made here for all the JK values we are providing a high logic state which is 1 ok and the reset or clear input has been given here for all the flip flops reset or clear input has been given ok. Now the output for this flip flop has been driven as the clack to the next flip flop. Likewise, for all the flip flops, it will be done. Here, this Q1 has been driven to this third flip flop, and this Q2 has been driven to this fourth flip flop. Finally, the output Q3 is here. Okay, so this working is based on this truth table explanation. The other name for the asynchronous counter is ripple counter. Okay, binary ripple counter, ripple counter are all same values only. So, 4 bit ripple counter. So, here we are giving clack pulse. So, it is counting from 0 to 15. So, this is the fallen edge. As we are using the negative edge triggering, it is mentioned here, we are using the fallen edge. Okay. Actually, this is the rising edge and this is the fallen edge. So, from 0 to 15, we provide at the clack pulse. 
Then you can see uh, for every clock pulse, there is a transition of 0 to 1 in Q0. Okay? So we are drawing this pulse like this. Okay? So for 0 and then 1, then 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay? As we are obtaining this table. Okay? Now, now comes to the Q1. How we are drawing this Q1? For Q1, what we obtain is whenever there is a transition, means we have to compute. Or otherwise, we have to draw the same. Okay? So here also in Q1, first we are getting 0, 0. Then here 1, 1. Here it is 0, 0. So here also 0, 0, 1, 1. And here 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. As we obtain in this table. Okay? These are the values that we obtained in the table. So based on the output driven from the Q0, it will be obtained here in Q1. Now what about the Q2? So for Q2, we are having two zeros here. So for this flag pulse, we don't get any output. So for the remaining, we are getting four ones. Similarly, it will be working. And for Q3, we are having continuous 0 to 7 zeros. Okay? And for 18 to 1, all are ones here. Okay? So for this is the timing for every pulse. For this pulse, it is 0, 0, 0. And this one, it is 0, 0, 0, 1. And 0, 0, 1, 0. Likewise, it will continue till 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay? So that is the last clock pulse. Okay? So this is how the 4-bit asynchronous counter work. Okay? Likewise, uh, if mod 10 asynchronous counter means, we have to do for 0 to 9. Okay? So BCD counter means, we have to count from 0 to 9. Okay? So this is how the asynchronous counter will work. Thank you for watching the video.